types of stone used in the pyramid. It's really fascinating. Uh, you know, you've got the limestone, which comes from the Giza Plateau itself. So that's relatively local. Okay, so that's not too bad. Yeah. But then you have the granite, which was used for the inner chambers and the king's chamber. And that was quarried all the way from Aswan, which is over 800 kilometers away. Yeah, it's mind-boggling thinking about how they even began to move those massive granite blocks that far. You know, we were talking some of them weighing up to 70 tons. Yeah, yeah. And that's where the Nile River comes in. You know, it was yeah. a crucial waterway for the ancient Egyptians, and it played a major role in transporting these massive stones. It makes sense. The, the, the logical way to move that much weight over that kind of distance would almost have to be by boat. Exactly. And the sources we looked at suggest that they built these these huge barges specifically designed to carry these massive blocks and they would float them down the Nile all the way to Giza. I guess when you've got a river like that, you use it, right? Absolutely. It was their their highway system, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, they managed to get these these huge blocks of stone to the, the pyramid site. But then there's the, the real head scratcher. How do they actually lift these things, you know, hundreds of feet up to, to build the pyramid? Yeah, that's the, that's the million dollar question, right? And there are a lot of different theories out there about how they did it. Um, one of the most popular is the ramp theory. Okay, yeah, the ramps. I remember reading about those. Yeah, so basically the idea is that they built these massive ramps leading up to the pyramid, and they would use these ramps to haul the stones up to the different levels. And that makes sense. It's kind of like the most intuitive solution you can think of. Yeah. But when you consider just how massive the pyramid is and how high it is, those ramps would have to be pretty insane. Oh, yeah. They would have been enormous. And, and that's one of the main drawbacks of this theory. You know, the amount of material and labor that would have gone into building these ramps would have been absolutely mind boggling. So is there a better alternative to the straight ramps or what? Yeah. Well, there are some variations on the ramp theory that have been proposed. You know, some people think that they might have used zigzag ramps that would have been built along the sides of the pyramid as it grew. Oh, OK. So it kind of spirals over the pyramid. Exactly. That way, the ramps wouldn't have had to be as long and steep. That's actually pretty clever. Yeah. And there's another even more intriguing theory about an internal ramp, you know, a ramp that was actually built inside the pyramid itself. A hidden ramp. That's that's wild. Yeah, it's a really fascinating idea. And there's some evidence that might actually support this theory. You know, there are these these shafts and passages inside the pyramid that some researchers believe could have been part of this internal ramp system. Wow. It's like something out of Indiana Jones. Right. Exactly. So, okay, let's say they're using these ramps to get the stones up to the right level. But even then, just, just dragging those huge blocks across the sand to 